Hi, so in this video I'll be talking about how to take history when we come across a patient with chest pain and chest discomfort or chest pain or chest discomfort. We're going to come across this scenario, scenario very, very often. So there has to be some sort of strategy of how we can kind of um, pinpoint every single one factor because we don't want to miss anything. So let's get right into it. So first of all, we want to take uh, into account every single factor, how they could describe the chest pain. Okay, so I use a mnemonic flap, DRQ. You can choose something else. This is my mnemonic. I just came up with it one day, and this is what I use. So F is going to be for frequency. L is going to be for location. A is going to be for elevating factors. Next is P. P is going to be for precipitating factors. D is going to be for duration. R is going to be for radiation. And Q is going to be for quality. So these are how you're going to describe or how you're going to probe the patient to describe the chest pain. But apart from these, don't be fooled if they do not use words such as pain. They might use something like chest tightness, chest heaviness, chest pressure. Those are also some of the common words you might come across. So now that we covered the chest area, you might not have only pain in the chest area. You might have pain in the other regions of the body. For example, sometimes they can present as acute abdomen. So what, what exactly does acute abdomen mean? So acute abdomen could come with pain in the upper abdomen, okay, and nausea. So you might not necessarily have chest pain. You might have pain in the upper abdomen and nausea. That could give you an indication that this could be an acute coronary syndrome or it can be angina. It can be either one of them, right? But we, we cannot rule anything out. So pain in any region around the chest, including a little bit uh, the upper part of the abdomen, think of uh, acute coronary syndrome or angina. Don't rule it out. So what other things we should be wary about? Uh, if you have infarction or ischemia in the posterior inferior portion of the heart cell, you could have signs such as dizziness. You can have signs such as nausea. You can have hypotension. You can have fainting. All these can be manifested if the infarction is, the, is in the posterior, inferior posterior region of the heart. So why do you think it happens? Why do we have hypotension, fainting, dizziness if the post, inferior posterior region of the cardiac muscle is damaged? That's because the vagus nerve runs through that region. Okay, This is due to the vagal stimulation. So another important thing that I want to mention here is that anytime, obviously you know by now, anytime there is chest discomfort, we are thinking that our number one thing we fear is MI. And if the pain is greater than 20 to 30 minutes, we are pretty sure that that pain is due to MI. Just like we want to rule things in and know what could be an MI and what could not be an MI, we have to rule out things that we think is not an MI. So what could those be? So let's say you have pain in the region of your chest that, it, that can be palpated, that can be pinpointed okay, to an exact area, something that is knife-like, okay, and something that is sharp, and something that can be reproduced okay, with changes in position and palpation and or or palpation. So if you 
feel like you can palpate it, it's knife-like, it's sharp, you can pinpoint it to an exact area, that tells me it could be a musculoskeletal problem and not really an acute coronary syndrome or an angina. Okay, so if the pain quality is like that, then we can kind of rule it out. Now the second point I want to mention is nitroglycerin. Okay, when we give nitroglycerin, if the pain becomes better, then we know that that, that was transient ischemia or it can be esophageal spasm, either one. But if the pain becomes worse with nitro, then we know that the nitroglycerin is not really working. In fact, the pain could be due to GERD or gastroesophageal reflux disease. Okay? So one last thing we have to be wary about is that in older women, older women have more um, more chances of getting an MI than younger women because of estrogen, because of our estrogen now. A level in our blood we have less MI but once we lack estrogen after menopause suddenly the chance of having an MI in a woman is much much higher so in older women if the women have shortness of breath dyspnea nausea if these symptoms are seen in an older woman again we need to rule in the fact that this woman is probably having an MI okay so that is only in case of an older women. So now these are the different uh, points that I wanted to mention in terms of taking history that we have to keep in mind um, whenever we have a patient with chest pain or chest discomfort.